Hello and welcome to In the Spotlight with Quo Serca, the definitive podcast on digital disruption in the print industry. I'm Luella Fernandez, Director of Quo Serca, and today I'm joined by Elitech. We're going to be discussing um, the, the legacy and history around RFID, how organisations can really innovate around print security and move away from traditional password and pin printing to actually use RFID card readers, and also discussing a bit about how the channel can actually improve its proposition around print security. So before we get into the conversation, John and Mike, could you tell us a bit about yourselves and your career history at Elitech? Sure, thank you. Um, I'm Mike Harris. I'm uh, the Senior Business Development Manager at Elitech. Uh, I've been here for a little over two years. Uh, came here from the commercial uh, interactive displays industry, um, so I've been uh, Really kind of, you know, jumping in and learning about RFID technology and, you know, understanding how, you know, this this le- legacy technology is actually relevant, relevant again with all the capabilities to incorporate mobile and modern encryption standards and, you know, that sort of thing. So um, it's been interesting and been kind of a fun ride and um, really been working closely with John and learning how to kind of use the print channel to uh, drive some of our, our new efforts, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Hi, Luella, and I'm John Villegas. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Elatech for the Americas. Um, I, my background's actually in the print industry. Uh, I work for some OEMs like Xerox. I work for Konica Minolta and Kyocera. Um, and the reason for, for me joining Elatech now, just a little over seven years, was to really kind of expand that vertical, to really look at print and see how we could grow it more in the Americas. Um, and uh, now we, as we keep, keep uh, embracing more verticals and growing as a company in the RFID space. Now I'm responsible for all verticals and I work very closely with Mike that does deep research and, and helps my team in the business development portion of it. All right, just um, to really set the context for today's discussion, um, we're talking about print security and actually in Quo Circus research, we show, we've seen that a lot of organizations, despite the rise of digital communications, are still very reliant on paper. And clearly that creates risks and vulnerabilities around documents. And we're seeing that organizations are deploying some form of secure printing, but it's quite a low percentage. It's just around a third of organizations. And I wondered if you could tell us a bit about um, the history of Elitec and how it sort of came into print security and how RFID technology mitigates some of the inherent security risks with um, passwords and traditional pin printing. I could tell you a little historical background of Elatec as far as how the organization was formed. So we are, uh, it's a German based company. It's out of a, t- a city called Puheim, which is a suburb of P- Munich. Uh, it was formed over 35 years ago, uh, but Elatec was a combination of three or four companies and eventually those were sold out and they, st- and they stayed just in the RFID space. Um, they, it really kind of cut its teeth in print, in the print industry. Uh, and now it's a very large company, one of the leading companies in the RFID space uh, in Germany, involved in EV charging and all that, that Mike can actually go into a lot further. But in the Americas, we just celebrated 10 years in the Americas last year. We're now in our starting our 11th year. Um, we were very small here. We were unheard of. Nobody kind of really knew who Elitech was. And we were able to to break our space here with giant companies like Xerox and some of the big channels. Uh, but the our emphasis, our uh, our leading product is RFID. That's our comfort zone, and that's what we've been growing. But we are, uh, Mike is kind of leading the area of looking at other ways to kind of expand our business, and look at other way, other things to to add to our portfolio because you have to these days. Yeah, and um, John, could you tell us a bit about you know what you're doing in terms of um, working with the channel? And um, John mentioned that your relationship with some of the OEMs like Xerox. Um, how how are you building on those kind of relationships? And are you looking at expanding into other areas as well in terms of the print sector? You know, p- potentially uh, managed IT services providers, or are you very much focused on the MPS channel? Yes. Yeah, so. Um... We have very large relationships with some of these manufacturers, as I mentioned, like the Xeroxes, the Toshibas, uh, uh, Lexmarks, HPs that we're involved in. Uh, but we did, over the years, clean up our sales model. We used to even sell directly to a dealer. We would sell. We even had some end users we might have sold to in the past. But we we cleaned the model in a way that uh, we we were almost competing against ourselves. We would sell to an OEM, but we would sell to, let's say, uh, 
a paper cut reseller in ASC or a, a distribution channel. And then we were all just competing. So we cleaned our model to just be the OEMs, the ASCs, uh, and some dis some other uh, software uh, resellers such as uh, NTWare or, or companies like that. So we, we really kind of cleaned up the model. We are now working very closely with our partners. And as I keep mentioning Mike, but Mike's a big part of helping um, us look at other verticals to add to these partners. Um, I Not too long ago, I joined a BTA event and one of the topics in BTA was diversification for these dealers. They need to look at other options, other avenues to, to increase because there is uh, some slowdown in the print industry. So uh, that's something that we're focused on as well. And we're trying to add that to our portfolio with our partners. Okay. And I think it's, um, yeah, it's a really good area to pick up on in terms of um, the fact that the channel is looking to or needs to diversify to create new revenue opportunities and longer term customer relationships. So, Mike, could you um, maybe take a step back and explain a bit more about RFID technology in terms of how it works and how it um, improves on the, the traditional methods? You know, RFID is a technology that people are, are familiar with but they're not necessarily familiar with it by name, right? You, you mentioned the, you know, the, the readers on the wall that you, you, you swipe your badge to get in the door and then, you know, the light bulb goes off and people, they get it right. Um, or even like, you know, the, the chips that they put in your pets to track them and, you know, the vet can, veteran, veterinarian can wave a scanner, right? That's, that's an RFID technology. Um, and it's uh, becoming a lot more relevant again with a lot of the push towards increased security and cybersecurity uh, in offices and factories and, you know, various environments. Um, and in the, the print model, um, it's basically the best user experience and the most uh, secure because, um, A, it's, you know, it's quick and easy if uh, a user goes up to a printer to release their print job and all they have to do is, you know, uh, hold their badge to the reader to release the print job. That's great. Um, with pins and passwords, um, they can be cumbersome to have to pull out the, you know, the little keyboards on printers or use the touch screen. You got to type in your username. Um, someone can be looking over your shoulder. Uh, and again, th those may be low probability events within an individual company, but from a cybersecurity standpoint, when you've got, you know, thousands of companies out there, it does happen from time to time, right? And if you can eliminate that risk, why not eliminate it, right? Um, same thing with pins. They can be easily shared, memorized by others, seen by others. Um, <clears throat> so using the badge as a way to have a, a, a very secure uh, form of, of releasing your print jobs and, and, you know, I mean, if it's secure enough to get you into a secure area or in the front door, right? as good enough to release your print job. So, I mean, it allows companies to leverage, you know, known infrastructure that their their IT department and their employees are already familiar with. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point because what we're seeing now with the kind of hybrid workplace and more sort of the mobility of workers now sort of coming into different offices and wanting to release print jobs potentially at different printers. And you mentioned there the fact that that RFID car technology can all ready be used by a company in terms of door entry and in you know smart buildings I guess they're already using that technology so I suppose there's that real convenience and cost effectiveness of using the same technology they're already using in their office to actually um, apply that to their print environment and I think what we're seeing is a lot of the print data breaches are typically um, the data shows around 60% of organizations in our study um, have reported a data breach as a, um, as a result of insecure printing practices. And generally that's down to employee error. So they're leaving documents in output trays or in shared workplaces and so on. And you know this type of technology is really great in terms of mitigating those risks and adding that multi-factor authentication on top of the, the standard password or pin printing. So, so based on that, um, John, can you maybe talk about, you know, the type of customers you're already working with or you're targeting? I know you're sort of going through the OEMs and channel partners, but it'd be good to understand how your customers are already using this technology in their organizations. Sure. Uh, our card readers are primarily in the print industry around a print management solution. So we're talking about the paper cuts, the Uniflow software like that, uh, where all the rules-based printing is taking place. So we become an added portion to it because uh, a standalone paper cut, I'm going to use them as an example. They could enter usernames and passwords and be able to authenticate and release their print jobs. Uh, wh where we kind of come in is because of the added security. Uh, the fact that the, the RFID card you're presenting is an encrypted card. Uh, the fact that the username and password isn't compromised. You're not standing in front of a machine and entering it and somebody could see your password or your credentials 
or you make the mistakes and lock yourself out of the machine or the network or whatever the case may be. So we become a, a, a more authenticated way, a more secured, encrypted way, and a, a better user experience. So that's how we kind of complement the the print management solution for authentication and print release. Um, we also are looking in additional ways, as Mike was mentioning, into uh, expanding into different verticals. So uh, we are also in the fitness gyms. We are also in elevators for authentication. Uh, we're also in, in fleet management for, um, for trucks. So we're in so many different other verticals. Uh, time in attendance, uh, many, many different verticals. But the uh, the, the one that leads us is 50% of our business is really right around the print industry. So that's where our focus is, is to keep those relationships going as well. Okay, that sounds a really great opportunity, as we mentioned before, for channel partners, because ultimately, if they've got, they're already working with those print management vendors, it's an opportunity for them to enhance those solutions with um, Electric's um, technology. So would you say that um, in terms of the, the channel partners you're working with, does it vary um, by region? Um, obviously, we're I'm based in um, the UK, but do you have different approaches in different markets or is it fairly similar across regions? I think it's it's U.S. is pretty much all kind of runs the same in business. I do know that we, just depending on the relationship we work with, if it's at an OEM level, if it's at a uh, authorized solution center level, a reseller level, we do kind of work with them differently. Um, uh, and but we we kind of protect those relationships. And but I think the America is very different than Europe, where you have very distinctive different cultures within such a. Uh, a small geographic space. So, but we do in like for our, our company, we kind of broken down into regions. We have regional sales managers, West Coast, Central US, Northeast, Southeast, and they step in to work with our partners. Uh, we manage a lot from the headquarters in Florida. However, we do have regional representation and they step in to assist. Okay, and um, in terms of the, the market opportunity, Mike, do you see that um, some customers or even channel partners are still not fully aware of the, the opportunity around secure print? And is that something that you're working to to educate them on? And do you offer training and certification in that space? And also from a customer perspective, are you seeing a lack of awareness? And again, that creates an opportunity for this type of technology. Absolutely. Like you mentioned um, in your report, I believe it's 38% of companies have some sort of managed print, but that's you know a pretty low number, especially in today's intensive cyber threat environment, right? Um, and in, and honestly, before I came to Elotech, um, none of the uh, previous companies I've worked for I had any sort of secure print, right? So it was kind of new to me. Um, but it just it kind of goes hand in hand with a lot of what's going on right now. So what we do is we do a lot of um, we try to, to educate the marketplace, you know, through uh, collateral and marketing campaigns on the importance and benefits uh, of secure print and how that can tie into a larger cybersecurity model. Um, we don't really offer certifications, uh, but, you know, we, we also leverage the, the potential of uh, the ASCs in particular, our, our channel partners, to do a lot of that as well. So they've that's been a tremendous relationship and really helped us um, get into a lot of end customers and kind of force multiply, you know, what we can put out there in terms of messaging. So it's been good. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's just one of these areas where we're seeing, you know, I think the industry is generally acknowledging that print volumes are declining, but there's a bit of a resurgence with MPS because organizations are now having to look at how to manage a more distributed print um, environment. And there's an opportunity for MPS providers to, to almost go back to basics and do, do um, assessments of the print environment. So that's an opportunity for channel partners to identify security vulnerabilities, particularly with um, password, weak passwords, and the, um, the, the, the other kind of security methods that are in place already, like pin printing and so on. And actually in the UK, I will mention that there is um, a bill, um, the PSI Act, um, PSIT Act, which is about protecting um, IoT devices from a consumer perspective, but it does touch into the print area. And it means that in the UK, at least, um, manufacturers have to make sure that um, devices aren't um, released just with default passwords, they have to be changed. And I think that's probably going to be something that's going to be enforced more globally because of the the potential cybersecurity risks around printing. So, um, so, so based on that, we, we talked a bit about um, RFID and how it really can um, enhance 
a kind of traditional print security um, platform, so beyond passwords and pin printing. Do you see um, the opportunity for our ID to be further innovated? Because I know we were talking earlier, it's quite a sort of a legacy technology, but maybe you could just talk a bit about how it can really sort of add value beyond kind of some of the traditional RFID technology that we've seen in the past. Sure. Um, so one of the ways that it uh, can, you know, is very relevant today is a lot of companies are, they're just starting to now, but they're going to be moving more in the future towards um, mobile credentials. So you will via either Apple Wallet or Google Wallet have a stored credential instead of a physical badge. Um, and of course, our readers are always up to date and able to read all of those mobile technologies. So that, again, that allows companies to have, you know, the what's called the unified credential where, you know, you basically issue a, a badge to an employee and they can, you know, they can initiate an EV charging session in the corporate parking lot. They can get in the gate. They can get in the door. They can uh, you know, pay at the cafeteria. They can release their print jobs. You know, it's, it's this, uh, you know, growing model that, that companies want to move to of kind of interoperable hardware that allows them to use these credentials to move throughout the environment without having to have multiple pins, passwords, fobs, badges, right? Um, so RFID is certainly playing a, a piece of that. Um, additionally, with just secure print, um, you know, we're going to be talking about multi-factor authentication a little bit uh, in a little bit here, but that's also kind of a future for secure print because um, as, uh, you know, regulatory bodies and insurance companies want a greater levels of cybersecurity, just releasing a print job uh, with, with a single pin or even a swipe of the badge um, may not be enough. They may start wanting users to do multi-factor authentication. Well, now you really do need, uh, you know, something like a badge. You can't really just do the the password, right? So, how that would work in a print environment is maybe there is a, you know, a keypad. So you walk up, you swipe your badge. That's kind of the equivalent of typing in your password. Uh, that's like the secure part, and then you have a pin. So that's your multi-factor, right? So to to do that without RFID on a printer will be pretty cumbersome uh, in the future. So we certainly think it's very aligned with kind of keeping, keeping up to date with um, meeting increased security needs and maintaining efficiency and good user experience. Okay, so we and we talked um, a bit about the, the fact that the, the work environment has become more mobile, it's a lot more hybrid workers. Um, and that's obviously having an impact on how um, organizations are wanting their employees to release um, print jobs across their organization. So John, could you talk a bit about the mobile credentials we touched on um, earlier? Yes, so we've been noticing a big move towards mobile credentials or, or authentication and print release in the print world from mobile devices. So that's a big area of our concern and of our growth. And as Mike was saying earlier, we're trying to be very uh, agnostic and, and just add all kinds of different technologies able to function in our readers so we can basically cover everything in our market. Uh, but that's a that's a, pr a primary focus for us right now to be able to, to include those keys and be able to read all kinds of technologies, uh, encryptions, and being able to, to use our uh, mobile devices, both in the Apple world and, and Android world. Uh, and that's a key focus on it. And, uh, and that kind of also is uh, feeding into a lot of the different verticals or the the ability to work from an office space, from entering a door with your mobile device to releasing your print jobs to uh, getting coffee from a machine if you're in an education system. So, uh, and then there's different verticals that are that that belongs to that Mike can kind of talk into. Yeah, sure. Well, and it's what came out of our conversations with the the secure print channel partners um, about how do they diversify and talking about these new trends and trends towards mobile. Um, you know, we're also talking about the trend towards multi-factor authentication, right? A lot of us now um, at work are not able to just log into our PCs with our, our name and password, right? We have to do uh, an additional factor of authentication, typically via via the cell phone. Um, but what we have done is uh, built a partner system uh, with solutions that use an RFID badge. So you have an RFID a reader, say, plugged into your docking station or a small one connected to your laptop. Um, and you use that for your multi-factor authentication to log into your PC. Um, and so what's great is we found um, where multi-factor authentic authentication is typically kind of a hassle. It's just something everybody has to do now to be more secure. Um, and those companies that don't, within the next two years, probably all of them will. Uh, so it's something you just kind of have to do. But we've actually found a solution that not only takes away that hassle, it actually makes it better than it was before. So when you're using an RFID system, what happens is you don't ever type your password in anymore, right? You go to your your badge, you have your, your badge, or that's the key with us is being able to read. If you've got a mobile credential that gets you in the front door of your office, you can just wave your phone over the reader. Um, and what that does is is it takes the place of typing in your password. 
Um, and then for multi-factor, you may type in a PIN, right? So having a, a four-digit or a six-digit PIN to remember uh, and type in is much quicker and easier than a 12-character password, right? Many companies are now moving to 12 and 14. And then what happens is people start writing those down because they're hard to remember or they use simple to remember ones, which aren't secure, right? So uh, in this world where MFA is coming, no matter what, we found a solution that um, not only meets or exceeds the security of other methods, but it actually improves the user experience and saves the company a little bit of money in terms of uh, time wasted signing in, you know, support calls to IT for, you know, uh, forgotten passwords, you're typing the wrong password too many times, right? A lot of that, those costs go away. So you can actually cover the cost of your MFA solution in saved efficiencies. Um, so we see a great market for that through the secure print channel because they're that's you know they're already doing RFID based security in all these office spaces with their dealer networks. Yeah, and John, you know, I'm curious because you know obviously from a sales perspective, what would you say the main sort of areas that you would um, position Elatics um, RFID technology um, versus you know traditional methods and. For the channel partners in, in particular, what um, challenges are they helping their customers overcome through um, the RFID card reader? Well, we know that they're primarily in the office space, or let's say our channel partners are working with dealers in the community. And so we know that they're around the office environment that may be needing multi-factor authentication for PC logon. Uh, they may be needing uh, time in attendance for securing uh, conference rooms, uh, meeting rooms and all that. So there's a lot that we're looking for to see what we can do to extend their portfolio uh, in in uh, diversifying into other markets. And then they could utilize the our product and what we were able to offer them to help them integrate into that. So that's those are the discussions we're having right now with our partners looking to see what else we can add that we can channel through them? We can even we can even have a relationship with the with the OEM that integrated or designed in our card reader, and we and we try to put them together to be able to offer a solution for them with that product. So there's a lot of that that's going on in the background to be able to extend their services. And do you think there are any particular kind of barriers to adoption with this type of technology, in, either in general or um, potentially in the market? You know, I suppose lack of an awareness is one in terms of being sort of really truly clear on what the the benefits are versus traditional methods. Are there anything else that you're coming up against in in the market in terms of customers and um, choosing to keep the the kind of traditional technology versus using card readers? Uh, you're absolutely correct. That lack of awareness, I think, is a huge part of it. Um, and again, that's where our ASCs are. are a big help in, in uh, you know, they, they've got uh, their dealer networks are just in offices and even nationwide, and that's helping to spread awareness. Um, but, you know, there is, it is a challenge in IT departments um, these days. They, they typically have very tight budgets when it comes to hardware, um, more so than software. Uh, so, you know, there is always a, 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 a cost barrier, even though, you know, long term, right, we know that managed print services save money, right? You save toner, you save paper, you, you know, in, in, in addition to the enhanced security. Uh, but, you know, for, for companies that haven't really thought about it or just kind of getting around to, to, to beefing up their, their cybersecurity, um, you know, cost can be a, an initial barrier. Um, but, you know, once, once they understand the, the arguments and see the value, I think they understand that it's something they need to, to move towards. So there's, you know, that is one of those, you know, certainly an opportunity for the future. Um, there's challenges too. Yeah, and I think actually that's um, there's some really sort of clear benefits. Like you mentioned, it's not just about securing print, but also the minimizing waste, uh, wasteful printing and eliminating wasteful printing altogether. And that that has environmental benefits, which um, is obviously becoming, you know, moving higher on the agenda for a lot of organizations to improve their sustainability credentials. So that's kind of an added um, benefit of secure printing in terms of, you know, minimizing wasteful printing. But I think also there you also raised um, a really good point about um, the fact that if organizations are already using that technology for their smart offices and they're using it for door entry or um, restaurants within the organization, then it's quite convenient to use the same technology. And it's very simple for, for employees to, to use that technology and get them into that process of using that to release documents and not having to worry about remembering passwords. And, you know, I think we said weak passwords can be 
you know, a big security risk. So, you know, I think it's it's interesting that, you know, when we look at our research, we're surprised how low the adoption is. But I think in, in certain organisations, particularly those that are very reliant on paper, it just makes sense to um, employ these kind of um, technologies just to make sure they're mitigating potential security risk because ultimately, <clears throat> you know, there's the, the potential um, financial damages and reputational damage um, with any print security breach can be significant for, for businesses of all sizes. So, you know, I really see when, when we're looking at our research that secure printing is it's increasing gradually, but I think there's still a huge opportunity um, for both OEMs and channel partners to work with their clients to, to implement this technology more, more widely. So, um, you know, when we look at what's next for um, security, we do believe that this is something that's really beneficial for organizations. So I'm curious in terms of what, what's next for Elitech in terms of its um, strategy and new products and so on, and also um, anything you think um, is a key trend for the industry in 2024. I know that we're constantly looking at new ways to um, to diversify as well. So we are not just stuck in the RFID space. So we're looking at, at mobile credentials. We're trying to become very agnostic into all the credentials we can add to our card readers. We're trying to be able to incorporate all the technologies into one multi-reader. So we, we offer one simplified solution, uh, but it's really Mike's team that is really focused on doing that. So I'd like to hand it back to him because it's his team that's focusing on the new, uh, the new direction that we're going. Yeah, so one of the, the big growing trends in the uh, physical security and physical access space, uh, it's, it's kind of bifurcating the industry from, from old to new, um, is this idea that I mentioned earlier of interoperable credentials, right? So traditionally, you have very closed proprietary ecosystems for access control. Um, but we know the kind of the whole world is moving towards more open and interoperable systems in, in all markets and fields and technologies. Um, so there, you know, for example, Elitech has joined the, uh, the PSIA, the Physical Security Interoperability Alliance. Um, and we're working with some of their spec specifications and others that are these, they use what's called public key infrastructure, PKI. So it's, it's a means of using the same type of encryption that's involved in, um, exchanging information securely with websites that can be done, uh, via encryption on an RFID reader. Um, to have a, a very secure way of logging in without having to use what are what are traditionally secret keys. So traditionally, companies have to share these highly secret keys with anybody that wants to use their hardware to um, or to uh, unlock or read a particular company's credentials. And so there's all this sharing and moving and and of secret keys, and it's cumbersome, um, and there's a lot of security risks there. And by using this this public key infrastructure um, or some variant of it, you kind of remove that. You get even more secure without having to have all of this key exchanging going on. So the, the industry as a whole is starting to move in that direction, and we've been supporting that by basically making sure we have the capability built into our readers to to do that kind of interoperability and, and aggressively working with anybody that's involved in interoperable specifications. Um, um, uh, so that's a, a kind of a big part of just a general future trend. Um, in addition, of course, we're pursuing a lot of different verticals, right, for RFID. Um, it's going to be a lot more common uh, in the next year or two, both in the U.S. and Europe, um, in manufacturing to uh, authenticate users and, and that are uh, working with factory equipment and machines and industrial processes. Um, so traditionally, there's been some like pen and password, you know, type of of environment there or not at all. Um, but there have been a lot of uh, increasing requirements and regulations around security in the work in the factory, especially with what's called um, industry 4.0. So it's it's a lot more of a kind of a connected networked factory. And so with all of that being connected and oftentimes connected to the, the internet as well, there's a greater reliance to lock down things in the factory with with more secure uh, control. So that's another growing trend uh, that we see and are excited about that. Generally, we see that organizations typically aren't operating a, a standardized fleet. You know, they might be using multi-vendor environments. And, you know, I think that the requirement to have a consistent user experience across all of their devices with um, a card reader is much more um beneficial and you know the, the much better user experience if they can do that rather than having proprietary technology um, across different devices and I think the nature of the, the print industry has always been very proprietary in terms of um, you know the products even within or, uh, within one OEM you'll have sort of different products that aren't always compatible and I think like you say the industry is very much 
needing to move to an open ecosystem and that's really through the the kind of the software platform so i think that's um really interesting opportunity for for vendors like elitech because it means that you can be that kind of middleware layer that um, really fits with that complete sort of multi-vendor environment. In terms of um, trends that potentially we'll be seeing in 2024, is anything particularly you think we'll see in the print industry in terms of um, print volumes declining or the impact of AI? Is anything, any thoughts you have on, in that area? Yeah, so, so there are definitely some growing challenges in the print space, right? We talked about opportunities with, you know, lack of awareness. A lot of companies haven't employed it yet. Um, but there are challenges, right? So you've got the um, shared office, home office, you know, the, the Soho movement, which is uh, maybe not as much reducing secure print, but it does reduce a lot of the uh, authentication. Uh, so, you know, home printers typically, you know, they may have to have uh, managed print services, but they're not going to be using, you know, uh, a secondary factor of authentication. Uh, but then also just the increased digitization of of offices, um, and then there was a Quasirca report, you know, a blog post just yesterday that uh, was interesting to me to learn about how AI is now basically automating workflows that previously were paper based. So there's some increasing threat from AI to uh, the volume of, of print sales in the future. So that's why we're trying to be innovative with these other verticals, with the, the multi-factor authentication, you know, to really kind of help balance out some of those challenges and, and hedge toward the future. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what we're seeing with the, the print industry. There's more consolidation happening in the industry in general. Um, the acceleration of digitization as well is um, having an impact on print volume. So there's a real need for OEMs and the channel to innovate and look for opportunities for new revenue streams. So, yeah, no, that's great. It's been really great to understand a bit more about Elitec and its RFID technology. Um, you know, it really makes sense that it is a key foundation of a broader multi-factor authentication model for organizations. And we often talk about this kind of multi-layered um, security environment that organizations need to operate. And it's really the foundation, almost at the, the base level, you need to have this kind of technology in place to um, better secure and uh, reduce risk around documents and you know, just minimize the opportunity of data breaches. So um, thank you again for the conversation. As I say, it's been really great to have you here today and I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Great, you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. So thank you for joining today's episode of In the Spotlight with Quocerca. For more information, please go to quocerca.com and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks again for joining and I look forward to seeing you in our next episode.